I need one of those, like, that was easy buttons. I need, like, one of those to just slap on my desk from time to time. What would be nice is if people can experiment with Goose in their browser. But ideally, what we actually want is something more like this, right? So we already have Goose Web, which is something you can run on the command line. And you can, like, chat with Goose through that. And then their app would get previewed here. We kind of want to have this running where people can, like, go to a site and try it out rather than having to run the command goose web. We're going to kind of vibe code this a little bit. Um, so we're going to start by just saying, like, uh, make me a generic Docker, uh, Docker file for a Linux system that installs uh, Goose CLI. And so I'm going to start just by having Goose <clears throat> make us that Docker container. And then I've got, like, a kind of a secondary check that we can do to make sure that um, that we have Goose set up properly. And then one thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a, uh, a configuration for a working LLM into the Docker container so that Goose can actually run in Docker because it'll need access to like the LLM and things like that. So cool. So it made us a Docker file. It's given us instructions on how to run it and things like that. So if we go look at the Docker containers, pulling in Ubuntu, CLI, yeah, this is way more complicated than I think we need. I do want to use the Ubuntu environment, but the main thing that we're going to need to do here is let me just pull in Goose, and then here's how to actually install Goose, it looks like. Um, so here's our curl command to pull down Goose CLI, but then we do need to make the configuration and copy over a config. And I'm just going to use my Gemini key. So we'll make that, we'll make that config set up over here. Um, and then we'll need to expose that port number. So we're just going to do like expose, oops, expose 8080. And then we'll have to tell it um, that the command that we want to run here is going to be uh, just goose D. I don't think we're going to need any other instructions on that. So let me just go touch, check out YAML, and go run our command here again. So let's talk about what we need in that config file. We basically need to set up the model and the provider that we're going to use. And so I'm just going to paste this in. So I'm just going to tell that we want to use Gemini Flashlight for now. And then we'll keep the developer thing on here. Because if, if we want people to be able to use this in a browser, they might say, like, go create an app. And it's going to need access to read and write files. CLI install doesn't pull Goose D. OK, so let me change the Docker file here real quick. We'll just run Goose Web. So we got our config, our container is done. Docker run. And we can just try Goose real quick and make sure that this is actually going to work. So um, I'm just going to do like, um, say hello to live chat, Goose. All right, it says, hello, I'm ready to help. So we have Goose working in Docker at this point. I need, I need one of those, like, that was easy buttons. I need, like, one of those to just slap on my desk from time to time. Um, so we got our Docker container up and going. Uh, we need to double check that this is going to work on port 8080. So if I load up localhost on port 8080, okay, site can't be reached. So we need to double check whether uh, Goose Web is actually running. That sounds like Max is here. I am here. <laughs> How different is running Goose D from running Goose Web? Uh, essentially, when you start Goose D agent, it's going to be a web server running. Well, it's not going to mm -hmm. have a UI. Oh, we need a UI. Right. So probably then you can go with the CLI and don't listen to me rambling. And Goose Web runs on 3000 by default. I just forced it to run on oh. 88. So I pulled, in, I pulled in your branch. We got all those files as well. Node modules. And then it pulled in like most of these files down here, like the goose launcher package lock and uh, the session stuff and start challenging. So, so let's go, let's do this. I'm going to have to build like, um, like an app folder or something to put all this stuff in Docker. Okay. So we'll do, um, so in here we're going to have like a work dir and we're just going to call that like slash app and we're just going to start copying stuff into here. So then we will copy over. All right. So the problem was that I didn't have this port binding here when I actually told Docker to go run the container. Okay. So now hopefully come back here and reload. Hey, look at that. We got Goose in a browser. Everybody goose. runs through Docker. Hey, perfect. All Hi, right. Goose.
say hello to the to the live stream chat. Hello, live stream chat. Hope you're all having a great day. How can I help you? All right. Awesome. So we are up and running inside of Docker using Goose Web. Yeah, yeah we've been going yeah. for a little bit here. So I mean, we got a lot of the way on this. Like we got Goose working in a browser from Docker. It's just that live session thing doesn't work. But yeah. we are able, like even just before we added this other stuff, we were able to get, just get Goose Web working. I think it'd be fun to see if we can get that, that preview pane going. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to, uh, to tinker on this a little bit more.